Welcome everyone to the Lux Audience Award 2024. How's everybody feeling? And can, can we get one more big applause for our two amazing musicians? We're so happy to have you here today. My name is Sarah Bronkhorst, this is Dylan Ahern, and we're from the Dutch group, the Kiesmannen, and we're boosting political engagement through culture. And tonight we have the incredible honor of being your hosts. And for this event, we'll have a live interpretation in 23 European languages. So just like real members of European Parliament, you can just put on your headset right in front of you and choose one of those languages. You can choose one for German, two for English, three for French, four for Italian, and so on and so forth. And also this event is going to be web-streamed and recorded. So if you want to re-watch this event, share it with your friends and family, you can do so after this event. Yeah, and tonight these seats are not not only taken by members of European Parliament, no, these seats are also taken by European citizens from all across the European continent. So this is a very special evening. So I can also really feel that power of Europe in this room. And it's amazing that we are going to witness some of the top creations of European cinema this year. Yeah, and this is already the 17th edition of the Lux Audience Awards, but I can tell you that tonight it'll be an extra special edition because all of these seats are up for grabs in this year's European elections. From the 6th to the 9th of June this year, it's time to use your vote. It marks that special moment in which we are going to elect our representatives. And yes, that is a crucial part of our democracy, just as the debates that are happening here every day in this house. Debates about topics that you will also see in the films that are the nominees for this year. Think about topics like education, pesticide use to protect bees, gender equity, and so many other important themes that are being discussed right here. And just as the late professor, uh, Dutch professor Matthijs Segers noted, what we need is called realism about the facts, the figures, and people's needs. But what we need above all is imagination. And that is exactly what the Lux Audience Award is all about. That's what film is all about. And especially here in our European democracy. Because what sets democracy apart from other regimes is that it allows us to play, to create, and to imagine a different world. And that's what brings us today here at the Lux Audience Award 2024. Yeah, so today we are not only celebrating European culture and European cinema, no, we are also celebrating European democracy. And to fully dive into that world of European cinema, we will listen to a very famous piece of cinematic music, namely Ennio Morricone's Cockeyes song from Once Upon a Time in America. And it'll be performed by our amazing musicians for tonight, Olivier Carurio on the harmonica, we have Quentin Dujardin on the guitar, and we have Kathy Adams on the cello. Please give them again a warm welcome.
That was truly amazing. Thank you so much for being here with us. And you'll be back in a few minutes. Thank you so much. Now, the synergy between democracy and culture at the Lux Audience Award has also really evolved over the past years. As Sarah said, this is the 17th edition, but quite a few things have changed. Um, you'll probably be aware of the, the fact that there's many other film awards, but this award is extra interesting because nowadays people, you European audience, can vote, can rate the different films, um, which is actually a rather new thing. Because back in the day, only members of European Parliament would rate the different films and thereby select the winner, um, and thereby representing the voice of European people. But nowadays, since 2020, you also, European audience, are also partly responsible, halfly responsible for selecting the winner. An average is taken 50% from the members of European Parliament and 50% from you, the European audience. Yeah, however, the Lux Audience Award would not have been the same if it were not for our great cooperation and support of our partners. And we're lucky to have our partners in the room tonight because we have the European Film Academy here, we have the U uh, European Commission here, and we have Europa Cinemas Network over here. And we want to give a special thank to Mike Downey, who is the chair of the European uh, Film Academy and the honorary president of the selection uh, panel composed by film professionals and the one who are uh, selecting the films uh, that will be nominated for this year's Luke's Audience Award. So we're giving a special one big thanks of applause to our for partners. our partners, indeed. <laughs> So five amazing films have been nominated and obviously I have the feeling there are some film fanatics here in this room. Can I just see by a raise of hands who has seen all five nominated films? There's quite a few hands. There's actually quite a few <laughs> hands going up, maybe 20, 30 percent. Now, we'd like to not really uh, test your film knowledge, but we're going to share some reflections collectively as a group. So what, l what we'd like you to do is there's a little experiment here, is we'd like to all to ask you to stand up for a minute. Yes, I know it's a long day, but please stand up. <laughs> we're going to get you active, not watching a movie uh, on the couch. And so our first question is, um, we're going to talk about the teacher's lounge. Now, um, looking back at your school period, I would like you to raise your hand if you can imagine uh, this one special school teacher you had that you will always remember, just like for those who've seen it, Carla Nowak in the film. Uh, raise your hand if you have the special school, stool, school teacher in mind and raise, uh, leave your hand down if you don't have any. And if you don't have anyone, you can also stay, you can go and take your seat again. Um, if you do have, you can remain standing. Okay, keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Well, for the second question, we are going to talk about smoke sauna sisterhood because it reveals the secret about Estonian smoke saunas because it's all about opening up to new people and new acquaintances and forming this sisterhood. Now, please remain standing if you notice that you started to open up a bit more to new acquaintances and new connections after watching the movie. And please sit down if that wasn't the case. <laughs> I know it's hey. scary. A lot of people didn't do that exactly. <laughs> Watching on the adamant. We see so many people in this amazing, vulnerable movie, uh, putting their precious time in caring for other people with uh, mental disorders or disabilities. Now, we'd like to know who in the room has got recently inspired to actually pick up volunteering activities by a raise of hands. And if you didn't, not inspired, please take your seat. Ooh, that's very honest. There's a few people. Very honest. Yeah, answer. we're looking for honesty today. This is our sauna today. Now, we are going to talk for our for our little piece of reflection about the hardship and the loneliness that we see in Fallen Leaves, the beautiful Finnish film. Um, but there's also a positive side. We want to see who felt sorry for the two lovers. Please remain standing. And if you felt happy for, for the storyline of the two lovers, you can sit down. And there we are. There's only a few people, the hardcores, are still left standing. Um, now, the last one, long summer days and drama in 20,000 species of bees. Stay standing if you got planned a moment with your family to reflect on some family dynamics. 
Maybe a raise of hands in general. Who's, who uh, thinks it's necessary to plan some family dynamics moment? I see a lady here. And there's actually a lot of people. Start talking to your family people. I think that's it. <laughs> yeah, that's the message of the film. Yeah. Cool. Well, this was a little warming up because we have put together a short compilation of the nominated films for this year's Luke's Audience Award. So I invite you to have, it, have a look together. Yes, indeed. And as the spirit of European film is back into this European house of democracy, I think it's more than time that we bring in the main characters of tonight. Yes, let's please give a warm applause to the stars of tonight, Vice President of the European Parliament, Evelyn Regner, and then the director of 20,000 Species of Bees, Estivalis Oresola. Actress and representative for Fallen Leaves, Alma Pusti. Director of On the Adamant, Nicolas Philibert. Director of Smoke Sauna Sisterhood, Anna Hintz. And co-screenwriter and representative of the Teachers' Lounge, Johannes Dunker. And then now, we'd also like to welcome the Vice President of the European Parliament in charge of the Lux Audience Award, Ms. Evelyn Regner. Thank you very much. Uh, an excellent evening to all of you, ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, dear film lovers. It's my honor to welcome you all to the Lux Audience Award ceremony 20. 2024. We have gathered here in the hemicycle of the European Parliament in Brussels to celebrate the incredible talent and creativity of European filmmakers. I'm very happy that we are all here together. The members of the European Parliament, the partners of the award from the European Commission, European Film Academy, Europa Cinema, the representatives of the film sector, as well as many journalists, content creators, and hundreds of citizens. We are particularly proud, and I'm deeply grateful, to have with us the directors, actresses, scriptwriters, producers of the five nominated films for this year's Lux Audience Award. We are really proud of that, and so again, a very warm welcome to all of you. Your presence proves the importance of our institution in supporting European creativity, diversity and narratives, freedom of expression and of speech, which are values at the heart of Europe. And we need to defend, to promote and to strengthen them in various ways and constantly. Today, we have gathered not only to celebrate one of our finest artistic forms, the cinema, which has played a pivotal role in solidifying our sense of European identity. We're also here today to remember together how precious and fragile our democracy is, especially now that the European elections are only a few weeks away. I have said it many times, and I will keep on saying it again, until the 6th to 9th of June, go to vote, use your vote, do not let others decide to, for you. 
we are all engaged as our directors and honourable guests for peace and democracy in one way or another. Now we should be the ambassadors and the messengers for reminding everyone that we should vote at the European election in June. Dear guests, your films, your stories are bringing important topics to the attention of a huge and growing number of people. In 20,000 species of bees, you have addressed the right to freely express and explore gender identity. In fall leaves, you have depicted how precarious inequality and war uh, influence every aspect of our lives. In On the Adamant, you have reminded us of how important our welfare and our health systems are, especially in concerning mental health, a topic often overlooked, yet so crucial. In Smoke Sauna Sisterhood, you have shone a tender light on women's most intimate stories of struggles, discrimination, violence and resilience, and made their unique perspective strongly heard. In the teacher's lounge, you have portrayed the daily heroic and fundamental role of teachers, which is in every corner of Europe, fight for passing on the new generation's the values as justice, inclusion, equality, often against odds and difficult conditions. And all these topics need to be echoed. And our role as citizens, as members of parliament, as storytellers and artists, is a constant and ongoing struggle for democracy. I thank you all for being here. After a long worldwide tour you have made with your films, and your films received acclaim prices, recognition within the European Union, but they have also resonated globally, becoming cultural ambassadors that transcend language barriers. And I'm proud that the European Parliament contributed in this success. The screenings organized by European Parliament offices across all member states have brought together over 60,000 people, sparking meaningful discussions and debates. The overwhelming response with more than 22,000 ratings reflects the deep appreciation for European cinema and the values portrayed in the nominated films. Europe showed its love to European films. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed guests, let us celebrate European cinema and draw inspiration from the powerful messages conveyed in these films. Together, let us revel in the beauty and storytelling and reaffirm our commitment to a future guided by democracy, guided by freedom, guided by human rights. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vice President Evelyn Regner. And indeed, to just reiterate that, how important it is that we all participate. And you have already started doing so by rating all these beautiful films. By, building, by doing that, we're also building that future of Europe. And talking about the future of Europe, I know that there are some students in this room of the European Parliament Ambassador's School. Can I see your hands? Can I see some waves? See? <laughs> We are so happy to have you here in this room because this is the next generation of Europeans. And it's extra special because this year for the European elections, there are certain member states that lowered their voting age so that this cohort can make their voice heard. It's a great initiative by Germany, by Austria, by Belgium, by Greece and by Malta. So let's give it up for this new generation of European filmmakers, presidents, citizens. Who knows, we'll see one of you here or here as a nominee or as a vice president. Now, I think the time has come to bring to the forefront some of the people that we're already alluding to for a few minutes now. The stars of tonight. The representatives of some of the European top filmmaking. Yeah. How did they come up with the story? How does Europe play a role in their film? And what is their message for Europe? 
So first we are going to hear from a director who created a film that melted many of our hearts. It delivered uh, an incredible performance by nine-year-old Sofia Otero who won a silver beer for best leading performance. We're of course talking about the film 20,000 Species of Bees directed by Estivalis Oresola. And uh, we would love to welcome you to the stage. Um, after we have watched a short clip uh, representing the film that you've created. So let's have a look together. Cacho Mutico. A ver, déjame salir, tío. Venga. Venga. ¿Sabes lo que es esto? ¿Qué pasa contigo, chupón? ¿Qué es? Mira. Esto es mucho más dura, ¿eh? Esto se enfría súper rápido luego. Y se queda sólido. Es súper fuerte. Es muy maleable esa, ¿verdad? Sí. Puedes hacer ya con eso una pieza. Please join us in welcoming to the stage the director of 20,000 Species of Bees, Estivalis Oresola. Thank you. Thank you very much. I have to read my speech. Parlamentari agurgarriak eskerrik asko hemen egoteko egon bidapena luzatzeagatik. Eta eskerrik asko Lux Audience Award ekimenari egindu zuen lan ikaragarriagatik. Pelikula Europako hogeta lau hizkuntza ofizialetara azpititulatzearekin batera, ate berriak ireki eta muga zaharrak sautu Unfortunately, interpretation from Basque has not been provided. En trans identitatearen ausia publiko anitzago batera elarasis. Edo zein idazle edo ta zuzendariaren ametsa. Euskara beraren ametsa ere. Greziar mitologian, Zeusek, baitutako Europaren nebak, Kazmo izenekoa, Greziar alfabetoa eraman zuen Greziara. Gaurkoan, nik alfabetoa baino, izkuntza bat ekarri nahiko nizueke ona, Europara. In Greek mythology, Cadmus, the brother of Europa, kidnapped by Zeus, is said to, be, to have introduced the Greek alphabet to Greece. Today, more than al an alphabet, I would like to bring you a language here, to the heart of Europe. Until now, I have spoken to you in Basque, the language of my country, and one of the oldest languages in Europe. Today, worldwide, it's a language spoken by 750,000 inhabitants, a communication system, a symbolic structure to understand and feel the world. Those of you, of you who have seen my film will be aware of the presence of linguistic diversity in it. For an eight-year-old trans girl, Basque is not only a channel of communication, but also a mean to express herself more freely, since Basque does not have any gender marker. A strange, beautiful singularity in the same way that other languages will have their own ones. Simone de Beauvoir wrote a foundational book for feminism in 1949. According to this philosopher, as long as the abstract rights that women claim for do not occur together with concrete opportunities, freedom will only be a mere illusion. Let's think about this phrase in any other power relationship. For example, let's change the subject of the sentence and replace woman with trans woman, non-binary person, migrant, migrant, minorized language, for example, Basque. Beyond abstract rights, a language needs concrete opportunities so that both the language itself and its speakers can live in true freedom. Why not Basque, Galician, Catalan, Sardinian, or Corsica in this parliament? 
Those who oppose to this idea usually use the economic or logistical argument, but promoting linguistic diversity, as Lux Audience Award initiative does, is educating intolerance and coexistence. It is understanding otherness as a learning opportunity. In other words, the promotion of linguistic diversity promotes cooperation and peace, which are more urgent today than ever. In the Basque Country, where I live, we just celebrated Corrica. Over 11 days, thousands of people have run 2,800 kilometers from town to town, day and night, without stopping, passing a baton from one to another to celebrate the Basque language. And it has been the busiest Corrica in history. Inside this baton, there was a message written this year by the writer Garasi Arrula. Let me take this message as a witness today to bring this to bring to this parliament one of its beautiful sentences. A whole, a whole world fits into Basque language. My question, does Basque language fit in this world? I ask this parliament to, by developing concrete measures and opportunities, guarantee the rights of all people, identities, realities, and speakers who are not represented in the symbolic hegemony, hegemony? Uh, to promote through freedom for a stable and durable freedom. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ms. Iruzuela. And indeed, you were picking up the headset, but it didn't interpret. Maybe. Thank you for your powerful statement. Now, many of us went maybe through an emotional journey seeing the amazing Finnish uh, movie uh, with the co-producing country Germany made by the legendary director Aki Karuzmaki. I'm talking about Fallen Leaves, a story of loss, of inequality, of poverty, but also of finding love uh, rich and rich with a lot of great sense of humor, uh, capturing many of our hearts. Here is Fallen Leaves. Tämä oli? Kuohuviiniä. Olipa pieni lasi. Sitä kutsutaan aperitiiviksi. Representing Fallen Leaves, here is leading actress Alma Pesti. Thank you so much. Dear audience, as you might have guessed by now, I'm not the legendary director, Aki Kaurismäki. Sorry about that. <laughs> but as an actor in the film Fallen Leaves, it's my honor on behalf of Aki and the cast and crew of the film to express our gratitude for the nomination to the jury of the Lux Awards and to everyone who has been engaged in this project, not to mention the European audiences who have watched the film. Thank you so much. So, accompanying the film around Europe and the world has really been an unforgettable and powerful experience, seeing how art can resonate with people from different countries, cultures, and backgrounds. I realized that even though Finland might seem like a far away little place with a strange language and a long silences and a particular sense of humor. People really seem to take this film to their hearts. It seems we have more in common than we perhaps know. 
As you could see from the clip, uh, Finland has been named the happiest country on earth for seven years now. Yeah, we're still a bit confused about that fact. <laughs> still, and yet, we also struggle with things like loneliness, poverty, alcoholism, racism, exploitation, zero hour contracts. The Russian aggression against the Ukraine cast a long shadow over us all. Yet, in his film, Aki Kaurismäki managed to give us hope through compassion, caring, companionship, and even love. He offers a human counterforce to cynicism and exploitation. And watching the fellow uh, nominated films of the Deluxe Awards has really given me comfort and warmth. Uh, we seem to share the same struggles. But as long as we cultivate uh, empathy, there is hope for the more beautiful sides of humanity. So thank you, fellow filmmakers, for your wonderful work. So, dear audience, here and everyone watching online, let's engage. Let's care even more for each other, for dogs, for the environment. And let's keep up a good sense of humor. That's the force that gets you through the day. Kiitos oikein paljon. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the wonderful remarks, Alma. For the next film, the next film is a film that challenged many ideas of cinema fanatics. It was a thought-provoking exploration of the human condition. I'm talking about On the Adamant, the film that was directed by Nicolas Philibert and co-produced by the countries France and Japan. It follows the floating structure of a daycare center where adults with mental uh, disorders and mental problems can be helped. Let's have a look. Now, we have the pleasure of having the director of the film here tonight. He will deliver his words in French, so put on your headset if you don't speak the language. Now, please join me in welcoming Nicolas Philibert. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. On nous a demandé de parler deux. We were asked to take two minutes to speak. That's very little, particularly for someone such as myself who speaks slowly and is always looking for my words. But there it is. First of all, I'd like to thank everyone who chose my film to be included amongst the five finalists for the Lux Prize here. You were obviously very touched by the people, the psychiatric patients, these fragile human beings that I filmed as they make their way through life. Hypersensitive people, all too often rejected, pushed to the margins, stigmatized, and yet, and I'm saying this very forcefully, they are people who very often have a lot to teach us. You know, in real life, sometimes 
amongst government leadership at the top of hierarchies, you f- you find s- some sinister characters who are much madder than mad people and far more dangerous. Anyway, in this film, I've tried to deconstruct some of the ways people represent uh, uh, people, do away with some clichés, and focus the spotlight on people who are constantly left in shadows. Today in France, but I fear the same applies right around the world, public psychiatry provision is overwhelmed. We need to start again from square one, but that's another story. Lastly, I'd like to, to tell you that being here in front of you today is something I find very moving because Simone Weil, who was the first president of the directly elected European Parliament, is someone I knew very well because she was my aunt. Thank you very much. Now the next nominee invites us to step into the sauna, which becomes a world of its own, a world of resilience, of tradition, and of solidarity, stories that are not just limited to those saunas in Estonia, but for mostly women across the world. Please join us in watching an amazing clip of Smoke Sauna Sisterhood directed by Anna Hintz and co-producing countries Estonia, France and Iceland. The director of Smoke Sauna Sisterhood, Anna Hinz. Tere. Good evening. Uh, first of all, big, big thank you for this incredible honor to be nominated among such incredible filmmakers. You're all amazing. Thank you. Um, Smoke Sauna is an ancient place where you wash your body and cleanse your soul and everyone is equal. It doesn't matter which party you vote for or which god you pray to. When I started to make the Smokes on a Sisterhood film, then I thought that the most important is the courage to share the uncomfortable. During the seven years uh, I was doing the film, I realized that actually the most important is the courage to hear the uncomfortable. Are we really ready to hear each other out? Listening to the other can be extremely uncomfortable. Talking about traumas can be extremely painful. But it is okay because traumas are painful. For example, about rape. I am a rape survivor myself, as so many other women on this planet, unfortunately. And some people have told me that, yes, Anna, it's very important to talk about the rape, but can you do it more nicely and more comfortably? And my answer is that, no, I will not because there is nothing nice or comfortable in the rape. The victims need to live with that discomfort every day. We as a society need to learn how to hear the uncomfortable, because only then healing can happen. Only then the most painful traumas frozen and stuck inside us can be melted away. We need warmth, trust, safety. And last but not least, in smoke sauna, healing is done a lot with chants. So now we chant, and we chant together. And uh, we do it in old Estonian form. I do the first line, and you all repeat, in Estonian. 
Ayuma means uh, thank you in the indigenous language of Varo and Seto. Ayuma. Ayuma, 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 Kõik me häbi higi vette, kõik me häbi higi vette, kõik me hirmud külma vette, kõik me hirmud külma vette, viha voolaku viha vette, viha voolaku viha vette, valu mingu vägi tulgu, valu mingu vägi Tulgu aitjuma, 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 ait. Aitjuma, 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 ait. Aitjuma. Thank you, Anna Hinz, for these incredible words and these incredible melodies. I was very happy to join you in your song. Um, the next film that we're going to present brings us back to our school days. Some loved it, others hated it, but it's a period we all had to go through. This film, The Teacher's Lounge, lets us follow Carla Nowak. She's an idealistic gym and maths teacher and she faces some ethical dilemmas that we all can relate to and she invites us to follow her example. It was directed by Ilker Chatak and co-production uh, company, uh, production country Germany and we would like to invite you to have a look at the, at the video. Wenn du willst, reichen dir aus. Was muss ich denn machen? Du musst so lange drehen, bis alle Seiten eine einheitliche Farbe haben. Und wenn dich was bedrückt, dann kannst du immer mit mir reden, das weißt du, oder? Und du kannst auch immer mit Frau Semnig reden, sie ist ja auch vertraut. Warum hat meine Mama gestern geweint? Hat sie nicht mit dir darüber gesprochen? Verstehe. Haben Sie sich mit ihr gestritten? Ja. As this story is incredibly well written, we are honored to have the co-screenwriter in this room today. Let's please give a warm applause to Johannes Dunker. Thank you. Um, first of all, thank you to the Lux Audience Award for making these films available in so many screenings in so many countries around the European Union. Um, thanks also for organizing the screenings free of charge and organizing discussions around these films. It's such an honor to be nominated among these great films. And I firmly be believe that this kind of exchange can foster an understanding about each other, especially at times when societies are so deeply divided. Our film was the result of a transnational friendship between Ilker Chatak, the director and co-writer, uh, a Turk growing up in Germany, and me, a German growing up in Turkey. Ilke and I met in high school, and out of our friendship developed a love for movie making. This has now resulted in our first feature film collaboration. Fittingly, our film also takes place in school, a school that becomes a model for society. It shows the struggle of Carla, a young teacher, trying to do the right thing in the face of a system that does not seem to be meant for that. We wrote the film with people like Carla in mind, people whose idealism inspires us, who are teachers to us in the best possible way, people who do not give up in the face of inequality, injustice or oppression. Thank you.
Now, over the past months, we have seen the nomination of these five magnificent films, but over 600 screenings have been organized across Europe, here in Brussels, in Strasbourg, but also all those other European cities. And in total, over 22,000 ratings have been spread across the five nominees. An amazing number. And thanks to the Lux nomination, it was already mentioned one time, all the films have been interpreted, have been translated uh, into 24 European languages. But what did all those activities across the EU look like in preparation for the Lux Audience Award? Well, let's have a look. I started to dream about being a filmmaker. When I got this news that I'm nominated, one of the five films, it was very emotional. I was crying. Que le film soit sélectionné pour le, le, ce prix luxe, qui va être montré dans les 27 pays, qui va être sous-titré dans les 24 langues. It's a film that's not only about school, but it's also about society and how we want to talk to each other in society. Una iniciativa como el Premio Lux del Parlamento Europeo es una oportunidad inmensa. Audience prizes are the, in a way, the most valuable ones because it's for the audiences we do what we do. Uh, show us some love for European film. So I hear you're wondering, why is this award actually called the Lux Audience Award? And what does it signify for European culture? And what, does role does, what, what role does cinema in general play for European democracy? Well, to answer all those questions, we have invited to this, we will invite to the stage the chair of the Committee of Culture and Education, who is responsible for the Lux Audience Award. We're talking about Ms. Sabine Verheyen. Dear ladies and gentlemen, dear guests, dear film lovers, it is an honor and a pleasure to celebrate the Lux Audience Award and to honor the excellence of European cinema together with so many citizens and colleagues. The upcoming European elections remind us that this sometimes challenging term is coming to an end. And what an appropriate way to celebrate this journey together with a cultural event that is particularly important and dear to me, the Lux Prize. Despite many obstacles, we have also achieved remarkable success with the Committee on Culture and Education playing a pivotal role. We have strengthened the three programs Erasmus+, Plus, especially also the Creative Europe program with the media part that is also very important for the film sector, and the European Solidarity Corps as well as taking a first step to protect free media with the European Media Freedom Act. As a strong believer in the evocative force of cinema to convey important narratives and values, I want to pay an homage to the directors and artists that are present here today. Cinema, thanks to the vision of directors and scriptwriters, has been able to read the critical aspects of reality. It has managed to anticipate dramatic shifts in society and to expose injustices oppressions and absurdities of history. It has portrayed hope, desire, the daily crises we aimed to help solve in our legislative work. It has portrayed a better world, a more inclusive society, and it warns against the deviations and totalitarism, obtuseness and blind obedience. Cinema achieves all this through the presentation of stories that evoke emotions. And this tie there is the reason why it is called the Lux Audience Award. The Lux Prize has its name from the unit of Illuminance, Lux, Latin for light. Its mission and its shed light on European themes, fostering public debate and enhancing the accessibility of European cinema throughout the EU. This commitment lies at the heart of the award's purpose. 
I want to thank the filmmakers for being here today. Thank you for the doors that you have opened with your films, the doors that you have opened to the soul of people, and for sharing with passion your need to speak out compelling and moving narratives. And I'm grateful for the journey the Lux Audience Award has walked in becoming not only a prize given by the honorable colleagues, but by citizens, by you, by youngsters, cinema lovers from all across Europe. This year we have taken another milestone. More than 20,000 citizens have rated the Lux films of this year. And the award is flourishing thanks to you all. I believe the passion and dedication you have shown towards the Lux Audience Award reflect a broader commitment to democracy, particularly as we approach the upcoming European elections. In today's world, both within Europe and globally, we face numerous challenges, making the strengthening of democratic values paramount. It is crucial that we collectively champion democracy. This effort involves not only filmmakers, authors, and storytellers who bravely defend freedom of expression and creativity, often in the face of adversity, but also those who use their craft to shed light on societal issues. Behind the scenes, professionals from various fields work tirelessly to ensure the production and dissemination of films and stories for public reflection. Our partners, including members of the European Film Academy, thank you for being here today and being partners, Europa Cinemas, also thanks to you, colleagues uh, from Creative Europe, and all representatives of the sector gathered here today play a vital role in this endeavor. As members of the European Parliament, alongside my colleagues, we are committed to keeping our doors wide open to foster debate, promote democracy and encourage participation in the European elections this June. Together, let us continue to walk this path towards a brighter, more democratic future enlightened by the movies of our filmmakers. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ms. Verheyen. And I think we all look really forward to seeing all these representatives of the nominated films together on stage. But first, we are going to find out who the public, together with the members of the European Parliament, is going home with this beautiful Lux Audience Award 2024. So please join us in welcoming to the stage Vice President Evelyn Regner, Chair Sabine Verheyen, and four specially selected citizens who represent the European citizens who watched and rated all the films. Please give them a warm round of applause. Great to have you all here. Here comes the magic moment. And I do it slowly. The winner is, I know it already, the Teacher's Lounge. <laughs> Congratulations too. Maybe we invite you for a photo together. Representative Johannes Dunker. One more time, congratulations to the Teachers Lounge. <laughs> And may we invite you, the winner and Ms. Verheyen, to join us with the other citizens here in the back of the stage because we have a few other awards to give. Yes, being nominated for the Lux Audience Award is an accomplishment in itself that should be celebrated. And therefore, we would like to invite the representatives of the four nominated films in alphabetical order to join us on the stage. So let me invite the director of 20,000 Species of Bees, Estivalis Oresola.
<laughs> and of course, may I invite you to take a photo together also with Ms. Frey and Ms. Regner, of course. <laughs> 20,000 species of bees. Thank you so much. And please join the rest of us here, the other winners. Now, may we please welcome actress of Fallen Leaves, Alma Pösti. Yes, and you can also take a picture with the... Yes, and one more time. One, yeah, we go for the pictures. Fallen Leaves. Now we would like to invite the director of Sur l'Adamant on the Advent, Nicolas Philibert. <laughs> Sur l'Adamant. Take the stage. Hmm. <laughs> and the director of Smoke Sauna Sisterhood, Anna Hintz. May we now invite you all for a group photo. First, you need this photo, and then we'll go for a group photo. Smokes on a sisterhood. <laughs> and may we invite you all to take a group photo with the whole family together. <laughs> Let's squeeze in. Give a warm applause of Lux, Lux 2024. Now we'd like everyone to thank you so much and uh, resume your seats, except of course for the winner, Mr. Dunker. Maybe um, ask you to be so kind to share a few words, maybe just one, two or three words. Then, yeah. Wait, do I have the honor? Maybe uh, we have an usher who can hold your amazing award for you. <laughs> you can leave it here, no, that's tricky, please. <laughs> um. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm so honored. Again, um, it's, it's always a strange thing to make films compete against each other and then you, you have a, uh, you, this exchange between filmmakers and it kind of feels then weird that some, someone is winning something. Uh, but I think it's like this, this has been a celebration of all these great films and uh, I think I'm, I just want to say again, I'm so honored to have been part of this program, part of the se selection of films. And I think this all couldn't have been possible without the wonderful team of the Teachers' Lounge. And I think most of all, um, because of my, my friend and writing partner, Ilkar Chadak, who's, who's taken me on this journey, and, and thank you for that. Now, Johannes. Please stay here one more moment for us, because we have actually a special surprise. Um, you're here, the representative physically with us, a co-screenwriter. Co the director, unfortunately, couldn't be with us here today, Ilker Chatak, but we have him on screen. Mr. Chatak, are you there? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Hello. big warm of applause for Ilker Chatak. <laughs> yeah, hi. Congratulations. Can you see me? I'm we can sure. hear you, but we cannot see you yet. I guess we are working okay. on it. How do you feel? Okay. I, I mean, it's, it's just amazing. Uh, it's, it's really amazing to be, to be, first of all, part of this, and then also, of course, 
to um, to you know to have received um, so many votes and now this prize. I, I I wish you could see me because I was thinking about my wardrobe today, and um, and and then I thought. I'm just going to wear my hoodie, but you can't see my hoodie right now, but it's an amazing hoodie, actually. Uh, there are these stars on it, uh, these yellow stars in the Union hoodie. And um, I, 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 you know, I just, I'm just very proud being a European, be, be, being a European and having the privilege of being and living here. And um, it's very strange that you can't see me. Wait, anyways, I'm just, I'm just gonna apologize for not being there. I'm in the midst of a production right now. <laughs> it's, it's very, um, but I, I, I thank you all for really giving this award to us to be, to, to make us, to take us on this journey. And um, I wanna dedicate this award to all of our teachers who have, you know, past, present, future. The, the many f teachers, not just, not just the ones that we had in school and university, but the, the many colleagues whose films we saw, who are also teachers to us every day. So thank you all for making great films. Thank you all for being you know, on this journey. And thank you for, for giving this award to us. It's, it, it means the world to me. Thank you so much, Ilka Chatak. And thank you so much, Jonas Dunker as well. And please, Ilker, promise us that you will send a photo of your hoodie on socials so we can really see it was really you. Um, that was truly amazing. Thank you so much. Now, we're going to prepare for some more music because um, we're almost nearing the end. But we want to talk a little bit more about... Um, the elections, because as you know, in almost a month or so, there's European elections coming up. And to be frank, Europe, the world, democracy is not in the best situation, right? I guess you all know for the obvious reasons. But for the last European elections, roughly half of this room, percentage-wise, went out to cast their vote. 51% of EU citizens went out to vote. That's roughly the size of this room versus this room. Now imagine, I would like this, side, this half of the room to imagine something positive, something that they would like to see change, that they would like to see different in the upcoming five years. Can you do that for me? Think of something you would like to see different in the coming five years. Now for this side of the room, I'd like you to do exactly the same. Think of something that should be changed in the upcoming years. Think of the themes, maybe, of the films that we've seen uh, nominated this year, of the winner. Maybe it's education, maybe it's agriculture, maybe it's the economy, maybe it's biodiversity. You all have something? Okay. Then I'd like to ask this side of the room, this half, to stand up. Because this side of the room feels empowered, feels that their voices can be heard if we just make enough noise. Can you do that for me? Can you grab some noise, make some noise? And you're just sitting there. They're just sitting there. You're making your voices heard. Now, can we get 75% of the room up, please? 75% and join. Maybe grab your European flag in the back, I don't know, and make some room. What happens if 75% of Europe makes their voices heard? It's actually already better than 51%, right? Now, we'd like to see the other 25%. What are you guys doing? Sleeping? <laughs> it's time to make your voices heard. Use your vote for these European elections, all of Europe together. What does it sound like? <laughs> what does it sound like? Show some love for European film. Well, we can do exactly this. We can make some noise from the 6th till the 9th of June during the European elections. Do
Don't let other people use your vote, use your own vote, and empower yourself as a citizen of this democratic union. Let's not be spectators only, but let's be writers, let's be directors, and let's be producers of our own future. And luckily, this year, we have the chance to empower that vote and to use that vote and to start clapping and to empower yourself. So be there from the 6th to the 9th of June for the European elections. And then for now, I think it's more than time that we welcome back again our amazing musicians. They are going to play a song which is a beautiful cinematic song which you might not know from the major feature films, but it's a beautiful uh, song. It's called Bluzet. Um, and so please join me in welcoming again back Olivier, Ker, Uri on the harmonica, Quinta Dujardin on guitar, and Cathy Allen on the cello.
Yeah, that was a beautiful piece of cinematic music to kind of end the night because as we are nearing the end of this year's ceremony, we would very much like to thank you, European citizens, but also members of European Parliament who voted and rated all the films and made this special ceremony possible. Uh, we would also like to thank, obviously, our partners, without whom this would not have been possible either, the European Commission, the European Film Academy, Europa Cinemas Network, and of course the Lux Audience Award, organizers, volunteers, and our amazing interpreters. Thank you. Again, a big thank you indeed. So this is really the end of the Lux Audience Awards Ceremony 2024. It's been really an honor to share this amazing night with you, uh, to have these amazing representatives of these amazing artists with us again. So please, one more hand of applause for the winners and the nominees of this awards. Rest, one last thing to say. If you can go out the same way you exited, you can take the stairs down to the second floor and then between the 6th, of nine, 6th and 9th of June, what are you going to do? Vote. Vote. <laughs> Thank you so much. See you next year. See you next year.